shit. So it's out. God damn lights on. It's coming on. Terrifi- terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Oh! Fuck <coughs> for them wires. It's Halloween week. Well, it's Halloween daytime. Now to me. To you. Chuckle Brothers. Operation U Tree. Right. Got some spooky stories to tell the. Are they true or are they hokum pokum pilly poo? Well, sat here in the podcast studio, got some horrifying, terrible, real true life stories to tide you over until Whitson tide. Okay. I'll just read them, I've got my little book down. Uh, now don't be alarmed by the images on the screen and the video footage that we found. It might be frightening, funny. It's frightening as turning a switch off. Think on. Derek Akora's not here to help you. He wants to be, but he's not. Because he's in communion with the devil. Ah, that is. Story one, the Cooper falling body. It's not sexy. This image here, <clears throat> according to the book, the details are pretty thin on the ground and are just really a couple of sentences. About halfway through the last century, judging by the clothes, the Cooper family moved to a new home somewhere near Texas that's in America. I don't think it means Texas home store. They took a photograph to mark the occasion and this thing appeared in the top left frame upon development. And that's it. I'm told the original snap has been cropped, which explains why the family is now not centred in the middle, as one would expect it to be. However, there is some degree of vinignetic... Vinign... Vin... Blurring around the edge, darkening around the edge if you want, which points towards the photograph being uncropped. Status undesigned. I think it's just someone having a laugh. The Enfield Poltergeist. This is one of Britain's most notorious poltergeist cases. It was pretty well documented and quite public, with a range of people experiencing peculiar goings on in the haunted Hodgson household. There was all kinds of phenomena reported and witnessed by the family neighbours, police journalists and investigators in 1977 and 1978. Furniture would move around seemingly without the aid of human hands. Knocking sounds were heard. Sources of which were never found. People were alleged to be thrown in the air. Janet was seen levitating above a bed as in this picture. Now, to me it just looks like that little girl's jumping off a bed and quite having a nice time about it. It's easily recreated, but anyway. <clears throat> Witnesses by a person outside the house through a window, electrical uh, levitating over the bed, witnessed from someone outside spying on a little girl's bedroom. Was it Jimmy, Jim, Sir Jimmy Savile? Hmm. Electrical equipment broke down with batteries draining inexplicably. They must have had iPhones. Teleportation. Oh, the list goes these endless almost. One of the strangest things about the Enfield case is that the thing behind it seemed sentient. In fact, it would use knock to communicate, and audio recordings exist, exist of it speaking through Janet, with a voice almost incongruous of an 11-year-old girl. Let's listen to some of that recording now. Hello, Mr. Blythe here. Marvelous sleeping, I'm talking. I'm not, uh... The voice identified itself as previous occupant of the house, Bill Wilkins, an old man who had died of a brain hemorrhage. Oh, in a chair downstairs. Stairs. Yeah. 
<coughs> what about this one? The Witch of Joshua Ward House. Spooky. Here's a picture. Oh. Blah blah blah. In eight nineteen eighties, Carlson Real 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 Lewinsky used a Polaroid camera to snap heads, shoulders, uh, passport style pictures. Um, it was the photograph of a colleague by the name of La Lorraine St. Peter that caused a stir. Mm. The Polaroid was developed and instead of showing St. Peter, it appeared to be depict a frightening image, a strange black haired feminine figure. St. Peter was nowhere to be seen in the snap. Photograph had apparently not been cropped at all. Oh, look at the picture. Paul Fax's opinion. It's a picture of Diana Ross. And the final story. The sad, horrific and recent tale of Elizabeth The Elizabeth mystery stands out for a few reasons. Firstly, this is no centuries old fireside tale with scant photographical evidence and super dodgy blurry sources that could be anything, thank you. The manner of her death has been debated must must have debated furiously in some corners of the internet, with it appearing almost like a locked door mystery. Finally, what happened with Lim's body was the subject of nan the 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 the, the, the stuff of nightmares. Eliza Liam was a 21-year-old tourist from Canada on the 26th of January 2013. The student checked into the 600-room Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles by herself. Five days later, she was reported missing by her parents after a daily phone call to her had stopped. About a month after the event, the hotel management began to re be begin hearing reports of pro 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 problems with the room supply of water. Compl oh! <laughs> Complaints included erratic drops in pressure, unusual colouring. More than a little trickle available sometimes in a very funny, sweetly disgusting taste. Mm. Investigation of the recent parts by the maintenance staff uncovered the unthinkable in one of the hotel's rooftop water tanks. It was Lamb's corpse. Guests had brushed their teeth, bathed and drank it with water from the tank for 19 days while her body lay decaying and becoming wiser. So what was she doing in the water tank? The first, expl <laughs> the first explanation I heard at the time was suicide, but almost immediately questions arose that seemed at odds with this. How did Lamb get undetected upon the roof? barricaded throughout to an area fitted with an alarm only accessible by employers. If Lazy Lamb committed suicide, how could she possibly climb into one and close the apparently heavy lids behind her? How did she manage to drown herself with nothing to hold herself down? Why did she have no clothes on? No, that's not a David Dickinson time, but I'll come on to me now. In the end, the death was ruled accidental by drowning, but... But... Just before Lamb died, the hotel security camera captured images of her. The footage shows Lamb entering the lift. Press the button, you'll see it now, it's on screen. Freakily. The footage shows Lamb entering a lift and pressing a lot of buttons before staring closely at the election. Then she seems to huddle in the corner as if wary of something looking at her, before peering cautiously into the corridor. This sort of speculation, peculiar. This sort of peculiar behaviour goes on for a while with the lift door remaining open the whole time. Eventually she makes her way back into the corridor before gesturing as if speaking it to someone. At 2 minutes and 29 there seems to be someone else's foot slightly in frame, flame, inflamed in the frame that Liam slept, steps over. 
Then the movement of her fingers and feet are very peculiar. Then the lift door closes and the video ends. Or, she was on drugs. No, no. I don't want to be dismissive of it all, but... Why don't we go to a hotel called Cecil? Um, anyway, that's a load of bullshit. Happy Halloween, if you like that kind of thing. If you don't, stick it up your ass, miserable.